Rupert was deemed to be a wise, intelligent young lad. They said there was no one braver, smarter than him for ten villages around. One day, Rupert was sitting around a fire with his other friends, listening to the adventures of a soldier who was traveling past their village. And this was the most interesting part of the soldier's stories. The city of fortune? Does it really exist? Um, I don't think so. Oh, yes, it does. Sitting at the top of a high mountain, gleaming like the sun with all its humongous towers made of pure solid gold. There is so much gold and wealth there that it is a bother for people there as to what to do with it. So they simply make things of gold and when they get tired of it, they get new ones, new vessels, new ornaments, new buildings. The old ones are simply demolished and the sweepers take it all to the bin. What? 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 Let them send some gold to us. Shh. Let them talk. Go on, soldier. Go on. Tell us more. Thank you. Well, Sharing money of fruit requires a heart, but all they have is golden gems strewn all over the streets. Even the dust on the streets is gold, which the sweepers grumblingly cast into their golden bins, studded with the biggest gems sparkling brighter than the night sky. I am sure the people of this city spend all their time in singing and dancing, for they do not need to work. Oh, yes, and eating the choicest food. Oh, money is never the only reason to work and singing and dancing or eating. Well, does the city look like this? This is beautiful, Jack. This is beautiful, Jack. Wish the city or their gold was as pretty. Tell us about the gold. <sighs> all houses are made of gold. The window panes are all diamonds. The streets are paved with silver and platinum. In the pebbles are chunks of precious stones. They glitter so much that there is no need for fire to light in the homes or the city itself. But... How does one go there? There are two ways. One is horrible. The stones on the way are so prickly that they will ruin your feet and unimaginable horrors like enormous pools of quicksand and slippery slopes that plunge into great valleys will block your way. So that even if you do reach the city, you will be so tired and worn out that you will have no strength to. And the second route? Oh, that will get you to the city of fortune within a few days, but you must. Enough, show me this route. I am going to the city. Don't be too eager. Let me at least tell you. I have heard enough, soldier, and I shall not let anything weaken my resolve. I am leaving now. Hey, now. I cannot wait. Well, Rupert was so eager to reach the City of Fortune that it did not even occur to him to say goodbye to his friends 
or his family. Bye, Rupert. Bye, Rupert. Bye, Rupert. Rupert walked with the soldier into a forest, and there the soldier showed him the rest of the way. Rupert was so eager to be on his way that he even forgot to thank the soldier. He walked a distance and came to a river. A curious-looking boatman was waiting at the bank. Will you please take me to the other side? It will cost you 50 silver pieces. Do I look like I have even seen so much money in my entire life? Sorry, no payment, no ride. Please, sir, I am going to the City of Fortune. I shall pay you all you want when I get back. Nobody ever brought wealth back from there. Very well. If you don't have the silver pieces, then give me a piece of your heart. What? I shall die then. Oh, who is interested in the flesh? I mean the essence of your heart. The boatman brought out a flute and played a strange piece of music. A few sparkles of light appeared from Rupert's chest and entered the flute. Then Rupert got into the boat and was ferried across the river. Next, Rupert climbed a mountain, and when he reached the peak, another man just like the boatman was standing there. Rupert could see the golden towers in the city beyond a long, winding forest pathway. But strangely, he did not feel as eager as he felt before. Since the time the boatman had taken some of the sparkles of his heart, Rupert felt heavy, as though the empty space had become stone. You need to pay to pass. I have no silver pieces about me. Would a piece of my heart do? Yes, it will. Just like the boatman, this man too removed a flute, played a strange tune on it, and golden sparkles came out from Rupert's chest into the flute. Strangely, instead of feeling happy at getting nearer the City of Fortune, Rupert felt a heavy, stony emptiness that he could not define. But he continued his journey. Soon, Rupert was at the towering gate of the City of Fortune, and just as the soldier had described, the gigantic gate was solid gold, studded with the biggest, most glorious gems and diamonds one could have ever imagined. Rupert ventured to enter, but was stopped by a gatekeeper who looked just like the boatman and the man in the mountains. Stop! You must pay to pass. Will you take a piece of my heart too? Yes. As before, the gatekeeper too removed a flute and started playing the same curious tune on it. Rupert felt strange. The City of Fortune was right before him, and he felt neither excitement nor joy to enter it. Just for a moment, Rupert wondered whether it was because he was paying with his heart and wished that all his heart would not be taken away. And because of this one tiny sparkle remained within his chest and did not fly into the flute. The gates were opened and Rupert entered. The city was just like the soldier had described, but none of it seemed exciting. Rupert saw a man passing by, and he smiled. The man did not smile back, and only looked at Rupert blankly. Rupert went ahead and saw a table laden with the choicest food, put out on golden trays, but no one seemed to want to eat it. Alas! Of what pleasure is food to the one who knows no hunger? Rupert walked ahead and saw a whole lot of musical instruments made of gold and gems. But nobody was playing on them. The sweeper came and shoved them into a golden cart. Alas! What is the joy of music for those who know nothing of worry and trouble? Next, Rupert saw a goldsmith who was making golden vessels each and every one of his pieces looked exactly alike. Alas, of what value is creativity for something that will be relegated to the bin just because it is too much? 
Rupert looked at all the expressionless, heartless faces around him. There was no joy, no smile in this land, and finally, he realized what it meant to have paid with his heart. And it was because of that one sparkle that remained in his chest that he could feel at least a slight sadness. The people of the land with no heart left in them could feel nothing but emptiness. For all the gold in the land, these people seemed to have become of stone. Rupert did not want to live like that. He decided to go home. I want to go home. I want to see my friends, my family. The moment he said that, all the sparkles of his heart that the gatekeeper had taken from him flew right back in his heart. Rupert was now able to feel a little joy of seeing his friends and family again. When the man in the mountain returned the sparkles of his heart to him, Rupert's heart beat with excitement. And by the time the boatman returned his sparkles, Rupert almost ran to meet his friends and family. Mother! Father! I am so sorry! Hey, Rupert! My son! You're back! Oh, thank goodness you're back! Hey, you are back! I am so sorry, all of you. My greed for gold had blinded me. Now I realize wealth is useless if it is not accompanied by a feeling of joy. And joy comes only out of three things. One, when we can retain our humanity and our heart whether or not we are rich. Two, when we have people to laugh with, to cry with. And three, when we are driven by a purpose to share and care. If all we had was golden riches, our hearts too would become of stone, just like the people of the City of Fortune. And thus, Rupert returned from the City of Fortune a wiser youth. It is true, isn't it? If life gave you a choice between people you love and all the gold in the world, what would you pick? Gold is good only when accompanied with love.